Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Soul Chat. I am your host, Ebony Tatora, and I am so, so excited to have this conversation. This is the podcast where we go deeper than the surface. Last episode, we talked about co-parenting and the quote unquote, let's use the word, let's say growth opportunities, because I don't really resonate with struggles. Let's talk about the growth opportunities that arise in co-parenting, right? So we talked about that. And one of the things a lot of times for a lot of women that comes up that I know it came up for me is how you value yourself, Right. How do you value yourself as a woman who has children, as a woman who has previous partners, um, people that I know as women who have multiple children's fathers, right? And the conversation I wanted to talk about was high value women. So first of all, before we even begin, I want you to think about what do you think about when you hear high value? Because not only do I see men judging women, but I see women judging women, right? And let's just face it. We live in a world where success is looked at as what you have, right? How much you make. What do you drive? Do you own a home, right? It's like a myriad list of things all outside of ourselves. And Kevin Samuels was actually one of the first people, or at least that's what the internet thinks, to to, to coin the term high value, And he would talk about high value men, high value women, right? And it began this myriad of a discussion of like, what does that really mean? Because as he was talking about it, it was, you know, a man who makes a certain amount of money, a man who dresses a certain type of way, right? But a lot of times we're not really addressing the core qualities that make us high value, essentially, right? I want to read something to you that I found on the internet streets, about high value men first, and then we're gonna go to high value women. This is found on, um, this was actually written in 2022, and I found it on a website called Dude Wipes. So shout out to Dude Wipes, whoever you are. (laughs) So what is a high value man? It's a vague term for a guy who kicks ass in their career and social life. As the name implies, it's a man who brings something to the table in all facets of life. In general, that boils down to a few basic traits, making money, having a strong network of peers, and being useful to others. There isn't an official definition of a high-value man, and you definitely won't find it in any psychology textbooks. It's basically a loose set of characteristics that changes depending on who you ask. For example, a pickup artist probably has a definition than a dude working at a desk job. And again, Kevin Samuels, they talk about Kevin Samuels really starting this conversation, right? He started comparing high value men to low value men in his social media content where viewers submitted dating questions. He apparently roasted guys for being broke and overweight, earning him the not so great reputation of being part of the manosphere. So when we talk about high value, again, it's this thing outside of ourselves. And the reason why I'm doing this episode is because I want women, I want women to stop equating ourselves to the values that others place on us, right? A lot of times we can be in relationships where people will say things like, nobody's going to want you. Who's going to want a woman with children, right? They're going to say things to you to lower your morale, right? And if they don't necessarily say it, I feel like there's this underlying social belief system where we all kind of buy into that, right? I know I bought into it where I never thought I would have two two baby daddies, okay? Um, And even in my own mind, I may have judged that at some point, right? And I mean, let's just face it. I feel like maybe that's why I even stayed in the relationship I was in, right? Because I didn't want to have to venture out, start all over again. And, you know, as, as men would say, have some other men raising my children, right? But essentially, let's think about this life. This life is not linear, right? It's not a linear life that we live in. There are so many different variables, right? That are forever changing. Your thoughts are always changing. We're always growing. We're always changing our perspectives, right? So with that being said, It's like, it's okay 
it's okay to love more than once. It's okay to have as many baby daddies as you have, right? And that is a discussion, right? That is a discussion to be had. And I think even then, that's like a whole nother podcast of, you know, is that socially acceptable? And a lot of people would think as a woman, right, that you need to look in the mirror if you're hopping from partner to partner, right? But who really wrote the rule book? And I'm not saying like we need to have this culture that just does whatever and we have no morals and no guidelines. But also I know that a lot of these guidelines were created for control. So now I'm gonna hop over to another website that I love. It's called Break the Cycle, breakthecycle.org. So shout out to you. Shout out to Edwin Mania. He wrote this in July and he's talking about high value women. Women. He starts out with saying, let's make one thing perfectly clear. Every woman is a high value woman. He said, conditioned to strive for an unrealistic ideal, many women face feelings of inadequacy. The traits of a high value woman have nothing to do with appearance, weight, income, romance, or the ability to tolerate Earth's pervasive absurdities. Amen. <laughs> but what is a high value woman? He gets into the traits of a high value woman. It's a woman who has self-confidence. Love that. Okay. It is a woman who has emotional intelligence and effective communication, right? A lot of times when you're dealing with people who are unhealed, men or women, right? When you actually effective com effectively communicate with them, you know, it, they, they almost kind of feel like you're trying to insult them, right? When you're just seeking solutions. And that's one thing I've learned about people who are really healing is that they seek a solution. They don't want to argue with you. They don't want to go back and forth. Why? Because it's tiring, it's draining, and it doesn't solve anything, right? A lot of us are meeting people's inner child representatives, and then we're wondering why we cannot come to a solution, right? She has independence and personal growth. She understands right? That she controls her place in the world. She has her own goals, interests, and life outside of her relationships and doesn't depend on others for happiness. Yes. Excuse me. She has integrity and authenticity. She carries herself with integrity and authenticity. She lives her values, whether we're taking personal, professional, or relationship values. She is honest, honest, and follows through on her commitments. She has an energy awareness. She's self-aware at managing her energy, noticing her triggers, right? I'm paraphrasing here, right? Trusting her, intu in her intuition. She's in tune with her emotions, her sensuality, and applies them to connect with others and create a positive impact. Yes, right? He's saying, how do we do that? Cultivate self-love and self-respect, right? Practicing positive self-talk, setting boundaries, prioritizing self-care, celebrating your achievements, and forgive yourself, right? And that goes back to the previous episode, right? A lot of times as women who co-parent, honestly, a lot of times we're carrying these things where we're not positively speaking to ourselves. We have not set the boundaries we need to set. We're not prioritizing self-care, right? We're we're being mothers and caregivers and we're not putting, we're putting ourselves last, right? We're not celebrating our achievements. That's something I talk about all the time is celebrate your achievements. And lastly, forgive yourself, right? Life is about growth. Life is about learning. So regardless of how you choose to learn, regardless of how you get to that mountaintop, right? Your, your level of learning, you know, it's really important that we step out of the conversations that are happening on social media because they're not, they don't really encompass all of who we are, right? Social media in itself, it's, it's an illusion, right? It's an illusion of who people can pretend to be, right? Where people can say whatever they want, they can come on your post and comment something negatively because they feel like it, right? And we can see things online and then take them personal, right? And it's really important that when we're considering, you know, what when I thought about, okay, this conversation, high value, high value, right? 
I consider myself high value because I add value wherever I go. Wherever I go, people are going to leave better. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter where it is, whether it's me walking into a grocery store, whether it's me, you know, uh, talking to my child's teacher, whether it's me jumping on a Zoom that someone else is running, whether it's me just being in the room, right? I know that I add value. So it's really important as a spirit, having a human experience that you begin to understand what makes you high value, right? Are you moving through your life with a lot of shame, with a lack of confidence because of what's in your bank account or because of your weight or because of what the world says you should look like because maybe it didn't work out with your children's father, right? We carry all of that. And then we show up in this way that that is very low value because we don't value ourselves, right? So I always look at these online conversations and there's a lot of people that have a take on it because it's from their perspective. And a lot of times they're not speaking to the bigger point of existence, which is we are spirits having a human experience. Like who is to tell you that your experience is wrong? I believe as long as you're not harming people, right? Do no harm, but take no shit. I believe as long as you're not harming people, live your life, live your life. There are an infinite number of possibilities that exist that give us the opportunity, right? To change our minds. You'll never know the opportunities or the possibilities that exist if you stay in the bubble of your choices, right? And a lot of times we're sitting there, we're judging ourselves, we're judging others. And it's like, at the end of the day, what someone else chooses to do shouldn't affect how you choose to live your life. So it's time that we reframe these conversations about high value, especially when it comes to women that have children. Let me tell you, for sure, there are definitely men who have their boundaries and they're like, listen, I don't want to date women with children. But as a woman who is, beautiful. I'm trying to tell y'all it's not an issue. It's not an issue to attract someone who has money, who is a high value man, quote unquote, right? Because someone of value can see when you're a value, right? They can see when you love and respect yourself in the conversation, how you think about yourself, how you talk about yourself, the type of conversations that you have. You know, so as women, we got to really, first of all, stop judging each other and stop trying to make women feel bad. Other women feel bad for their choices, right? If you've been married for 30 years and you've been with this one person and you've built a successful this and that, and that's your path, bravo to you, right? Much of what's been created couldn't be created if someone didn't take a different path. You know, and I'm not speaking to, you know, having homes that don't have both parents because I stick beside it, right? And again, like I spoke about in the other podcast, it takes a village, right? It takes a village to raise children. So whether we have two, two parents in the home or not, we still need a village. We need a village of support. But one of the things that I see that personally <laughs> can aggravate me just a little bit, you know, is especially these conversations about high value men and high value women. And it's like, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. What, what's, what rating system are we using? You know, really, what rating system are we using? Right? Because at the end of the day, God, you ain't getting, a, you ain't getting to heaven. And God's like, you know what, girl? God said, girl, what's your credit score? What you what would your credit score when you died? <laughs> God ain't like how much money you had in the bank account. God ain't like how many partners you had, how many children you had, how many baby daddies you had. Did you get a degree? All of that is our human way of measuring success. It's our human way of measuring what? What's this word? Value. Right? And it's so easy to fall into the trap of what society says is valuable. And we can see right in front of us, it's crumbling before our eyes, right? Society said the educational system was valuable. We see it crumbling before our eyes because it doesn't work anymore. 
it's not applicable. Someone could graduate from high school, right? Mr. Beast, he started his podcast when he was, his YouTube, he was probably like 12. And he's one of the richest YouTubers. Didn't go to college, right? So it's crumbling right in front of us. The values that society says, these are the values. And if you learn about them long enough, they were all created to control, right? So as we honor this conversation, the last thought I want to leave you with is remember that you're a spirit having a human experience. You get to define what is high value. You get to define the level of value you bring to the world. What I really consider a high value woman is someone who creates value and who is impactful to others, right? She's not just living her life, oblivious to everything else, right? You add value. You add value, right? Because at the end of the day, each one of us are an important part of the puzzle. Each one of us is necessary and needed. And if you don't step in your ability to add value to the world, right? This is why I feel a lot of us aren't really happy because you haven't figured out how to add value. And it's not that you haven't figured out, you haven't believed in the value that you hold yet enough to actually live in it, regardless of what other people think, regardless of what your past has been, regardless of how many baby daddies you got, regardless of what's in your bank account, regardless of what you're doing now in life, you don't yet believe in the value you offer. And I want to share with you that where you are right now is so holy and you are so perfect. And part of my mission, even for my own life, is I want to see myself the way God sees me so that I can show up and so that I can operate as a God-called person, not because I have some degree that says I'm valuable, not because I've made some sort of amount of money that that says I'm valuable, right? But because I'm living in my truth and in my purpose. So thank you all so much for listening. Your payment, you know, your payment to this podcast is to share it, share it with a friend, share it on social media. Let me know what you think. Oh, this is a conversation. I want to know how you all feel about it. Thank you again. My name is Ebony Chatora, and I will see you on the next episode. And I, as I step into to Mama Bearhood, I love you all so much. Have a blessed and amazing day. I'll see you on the next episode.